So I'm here to speak about this remarkable cultural phenomenon that's been brewing and evolving for over 15 years now and has largely been almost completely overlooked in mainstream media and awareness. And there's some grace to this fact, but it's a global phenomenon, it's international, and at the same time, the west coast of North America, with the very special environment we have here, both culturally and naturally, is at the crest of its cutting edge. And Vancouver, BC, right here, is one of its main hubs. And it's not just in Vancouver, it's province-wide and goes well into Alberta. And I'm gonna make the bold statement right here at TEDx that Vancouver is in fact the number two center of this global phenomenon. San Francisco, number one. Vancouver, number two. It's friendly, it's friendly. And I'm here to tell you all about it. So, pst. But don't tell anyone else. <laughs> so, this new evolutionary culture, so this new evolutionary culture has never been branded. There are no agreed upon identifiers or labels. In fact, there are several distinct subcultures within it. So you might have already heard the term burners or tribal or tribies or perhaps even side transfers. There's a few more, but those are probably the main ones that fit within this term transformational festivals that I'm here to talk about. So I'd like to just get a quick gauge right now from the audience here. How many of you are already familiar with what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, so maybe a third, a third or so? Awesome, so for those of you who've never been, I happen to have brought with me to my TED Talk a galaxy-class light ship capable of going anywhere in space-time. And it's got just enough room for 500 people. So why don't we hop in and go for a little visit to one of these festivals and see what it's all about. <laughs> Come on, everybody. It works better if we all do it. Well, here we are, and the first thing you'll notice is that we're outdoors in nature. And you can choose your own adventure for this one. It might be in the forest, or the desert, or a beach, and it's probably in the summer, so use your imagination. So the next thing you notice is that we're not alone out here. There are other humans gathered for the same purposes. And as we walk around and we see the clusters of humans camped here and there, it kind of feels like a village. But we don't have a lot of time, so let's not linger at home camp. Let's go in and see what's going on. So the first thing we notice at these festivals is that the central features are built around music stages and dance floors, and that the prevalent type of music is electronic dance music. And we'll talk a little bit more later about why this particular type of music is important in this alchemy of ingredients. But looks kind of like fun, doesn't it? Too bad we don't have time to stay. Well, maybe for 10 seconds or so. All right, well, let's go. So, I'm starting to get a little anxious because we've only got three minutes here and there's literally like 20 to 60 workshops included in this festival that run the gamut of interests from raw foods and yoga to Nassim Harriman's unified field theory to the latest music production software to natural building and permaculture. And I want to go to all of them. Oh my God, is that, is that visionary art master Alex Gray giving a free workshop in the middle of the desert? I so want to stay for this. Okay, but we better get going. So speaking of visionary art, 
there's this whole art movement that's very much intertwined with this new festival culture that is evoking on canvas the transforming perception of ourselves and our universe. And while we don't have a lot of time to peruse the visionary art gallery that's on site, but wait, is that Eric Nez and Autumn Sky Morrison and Heskin and Weaver live painting on the side of the stage up on a platform? Wow some of the brightest up-and-coming stars of the new second generation of visionary artists. And then you soon start to notice that there's art everywhere. And it might be decorating some stage or structure, or it might just be filling some nook or cranny, or it might be an epic installation all unto itself. And then, you start to get this crazy idea that we are art. And the art goes hand in hand with performance. And many touch on mythic themes, the so-called prayer formances. And a good portion of them feature fire. So we don't have time to step into the market, but this is also a social economy. There's all the artisans, all the clothing and fashion designers, all the food, the crystals. But the thing that makes us stop and take a deep breath is that we notice that it's not all just art for art's sake. There's this whole sacred stream. There's altars everywhere at every stage. Sometimes there's even full-on temples. And there's people gathered holding sacred space in circles and ceremonies, not under the flag of one religion or spiritual stream, but something more direct and unmediated. And we'll talk a little bit more about what this might mean too. So that I didn't even mention all the participant-driven content and that might come in the form of costuming. Participants might contribute additional zones, cush areas, healing zones, shisha lounges, tea houses, renegade sound systems, theme camps. So our time here is almost up. But before we have to go back to the theater, I, I I'd like us to notice that with all this going on, the result is a content-rich reality that features a high density of quality interactions. These are typically intensely co-created affairs. A, a typical ratio for one of these festivals is that a full third to a theoretical 100% of participants are active co-creators in the actual experience. And what we find, what we witness, is that there is this real and deep human need to contribute to community. So these festivals are the convergence points for many forms of cutting-edge content. They are the confluence points for cultural creatives, the tribal trading routes of our modern day. They are playing a significant role in the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, achieving transformation through inspiration by stoking us to take it to the next level with little expended on resistance and all on creating the world now as dreamed up for this very moment. As containers of these quality interactions and experiences, they become markers in our lives, returning a sense of mythos that is missing from the offerings of mainstream culture. Beloved, earth dance, the oracle gatherings, symbiosis, lightning in a bottle, Entheos, intention, Burning Man, photosynthesis, mystic garden party, emergency, fairy worlds, the list goes on. So let's hop back into the light ship, get back to the theater, and I can tell you how all this came to be and what it might signify. It's faster on the way back. OK, well, we're back. Something I've witnessed throughout my life, been fascinated, even compelled by, 
has been the power of music, which we typically classify as entertainment, as leisure activity in our society. But the power of music to consistently create new culture where there was none before. New forms of music emerge, they articulate, evoke something essential about the human experience, and around that, humans cluster and form culture, or more properly, subculture, with shared values, practices, codes, aesthetics, identity, worldview, and story. In this way, music continues to speak to the deepest spirit of what it is to be human, that insistent thirst for more freedom, more expression, to push against the boundaries. So in the example we're talking about today, this first started with the tools for the new music. And these were samplers, synthesizers, sequencers, drum machines, digital effects. While initially dismissed as passing fads, as pale replicas of the real thing, in fact, these were new models of working with frequencies intended to be transmitted through a new breed of full-spectrum sound systems. In the hands of humans, these tools birthed electronic dance music, where layers of hypnotic and funky rhythm and bass and melody and effects were woven to induce an ecstatic state that is less about the human stories sung of love and loss and more about some shared psychic space, some primordial remembrance, perhaps, of the telepathy we experienced back when we were all fish swimming in unison, and now the music is our ocean. So for the post-war generations, it was rock and roll that burst forth with spontaneous wildness and possibility and broke the chokehold of Puritan Protestant paradigm on Western culture. But when rave culture birthed out of electronic dance music, what this represented through a new generation, first in the UK and the East Coast of America, and then the world, was nothing less than the full return of the ecstatic tradition into Western culture. And whereas rock had retained the idolatry of the band as quasi-religious spectacle, Rave tended to emphasize the communal and participatory nature of the dance trance ritual. And when we take a look, do a little research, we find out that in fact, this is the oldest way of being, used for spiritual and shamanic purposes among countless cultures for time immemorial. Some suggest perhaps the roots of religion itself. An ethnographic study conducted in 1962 found that 92% of small-scale societies encouraged some kind of ecstatic trance, most often through prolonged dancing or chanting. So, rave comes to the West Coast in the 90s, where it meets these already existing progressive currents and this strong, outdoors, natural tradition. And whereas glimmers of the new evolutionary culture had been present in rave since its very beginnings, wherever the culture was confined to the nightclubs and the warehouses, it was never really able to escape that mesh of all our crazy human neuroses bouncing off each other. But in the outdoor experience of dancing all night into the dawn, there is contained and inherently grounded, I believe, inherently spiritual experience. The Moon Tribe of Los Angeles were among the first, driving deep into the majestic Mojave Desert for their legendary free full moon parties. Here in BC, we were tribal harmonics, and we brought this idea into the forests, into the power of the Ilaho Valley with its river rushing down from the glaciers. Wiccan, pagan, New Age and eco-feminist influences saw us intuitively timing our gatherings with the full moons, the solstices, honoring them with some kind of ritual, opening circles, closing circles. In this way, there was a realignment with natural and cosmic cycles, a tuning in with the mother, a reconnection 
and restoring of a relationship full of honor. In this modern, in this modernly authentic way, in this authentically modern way, as urban technological humans, we had stumbled back upon the most ancient of tribal rituals. So tribal dance culture, this was the first meme. And tribal, for all the connotations and contexts which make its usage problematic, is in many ways accurate to the spirit of the experience. We gathered as a tribe. We danced through the darkness. We danced through our process, our pain, and our love. And as the dawn came up, and we were still dancing among the ancient trees, watching the waterfalls springing off the mountain peaks, we realized that, yes, it's good to be alive. It's good to be human, whatever you've experienced, with all our feelings and form. And what is notable about these gatherings is that they supported spontaneous episodes of healing catharsis. And this is still evident today, but literally, back in the day, every party, there would be someone or two curled up, bawling, releasing their grief being supported by friends or by strangers. And I was that person on a few occasions. And I, I never did therapy, and I most definitely wasn't raised with a vocabulary to understand and process my emotions. And this was how I broke through the armor. And I know it was because we were in such strong containers of love and safety that my psyche knew that this was the place to release all that had been bottled up and unexpressed for so long. And over time, we've learned to support those going through challenging or cathartic experiences by creating peer support, healing, and sanctuary spaces in these festivals. And as much as this is the reinvigoration of a timeless lineage, this is also a future culture. This is the counterculture of the internet, of the Web 2.0 generation. And rather than being Luddite back to the landers, we are early adopters of technology. I mean, electronic music is a type of digital art. There have always been lots of techies, web developers, digital media artists in the culture. So at the same time, we see this tribal, ancient, mythic meme moving through, we also have this sci-fi, galactic, techno meme happening at the same time. So an ancient future culture. So the tribal dance is the core ritual of these transformational festivals, which themselves describe the temporary whole reality containers we create for three days, five days, seven days at a time. And when we go outdoors, when we return to that original canvas of nature, where you have to bring everything with us, we soon quickly realize what it is that we as humans bring to the picture. We are reality makers. We are space crafters. We are decorators and adorners. We are world makers. And in these temporary autonomous zones where we escape for a moment from the hierarchies and, and agendas embedded into the very material of our mainstream consensus reality, we are freed to co-create and share the momentary realization of the liberated world we would wish to live in. We have learned that these parties are practice for co-creating this very world. We've lived it together, tasted it, if even only for a few days. These are spaces where we are able to touch in with our full humanness, no longer hidden behind the roles we must live in our daily lives, so often alienated, defensive, traumatized. Instead, these are models of compatible diversity. The dance floor is both a metaphor and the lived reaffirmation of this. We are all swimming in that ocean of music. Each one of us different, each one of us right.
And this, and as we see the joy, as we see the joy being expressed in others, we realize that it's safe to let our guards down and let that same joy which animates us come out. And this gives us the strength, the juice, to go back into our lives, into the struggles of living in this world with our cores nurtured and restored. So no less profound is this emergence of a new type of spiritual culture in these festivals, a spiritual culture completely uninterested in charismatic leaders, dogmas, or doctrine, where ritual does not require that we surrender our autonomy as critical thinking individuals, but instead arises as the shared acknowledgement and honoring of our sacred experience together. Now, I was raised atheist without any kind of religious story, and this is how I came to nurture a direct connection with spirit. In invoking the sacred together, spirit answers and uplifts all of us. You can feel the joy sweeping through the assembled circle, the love being magnified, that exquisite, overflowing love that brings us to tears. And in the prayer performances and the ceremonies, we are infusing sacred consciousness with new creative juice. In a global culture, we are aware of the many faces and practices of worship. And strands of these practices and prayers are woven from many traditions as equal devotions to the divine. And I believe what we are witnessing in these festivals is the rejoining of something that has been split in Western culture since the 13th century, when the church finally outlawed dancing and ejected this and all other ecstatic expressions off the church grounds and into the commons, where it developed into the tradition of carnival. And I believe what we are witnessing with these new transformational festivals is nothing less than the rejoining of the sacred ritual and the secular festival. And I'm just going to leave you with a couple of questions um, in case anything that I've said has sparked something in you. And so these are the questions. What do these festivals have to offer these times of such intense change, both in terms of resiliency and pragmatic approaches? And what is brewing in these transformational festivals that is the antidote that speaks so deeply to what is missing in our modern materialist urban societies. And I thank you for your attention today.